So delivery. So can you talk about how you're doing delivery of the gene therapies at the, at the moment and then kind of where you're looking to take that? Well, I can tell you BioViva's side. So we're a research and development company. So I can tell you that in the general population, in most uh, gene therapy studies, AAV is the gene therapy delivery method. Mm. So AAV is called the deno-associated virus. It is a uh, defunct virus. It can't get people sick. And it's used to deliver a gene to the nucleus. Um, with our research and development, you'll see that we're using a new viral vector uh, that has the ability to deliver multiple genes because curing aging will take multiple genes. One gene isn't going to cure aging. And um, it also has the attribute uh, much like AAV of not integrating. So you were asking me how that worked. How do you not integrate a gene and you still get it to function? you deliver it to the nucleus and the, um, the mechanisms of the cell will read uh, the gene and they will code for the protein. And that, that is the way um, AAV is used in almost all of the regulated technologies. That's how they are working currently. Right, so it, it's like a little strand of DNA Good. Yeah, it's like it's like it's the DNA and it's a promoter. The promoter tells the DNA how much of the protein to make. And right. so that's what the uh, delivery method delivers. Okay, interesting. And so the Rutgers, you, with Rutgers University, you're working with a, a different type of virus that has like a, a larger payload. Yeah, it has a larger payload. It's something that almost everyone has seen. Uh, you can become uh, affected, uh, infected by it multiple times in your natural uh, daily, da daily life, I guess. And it has um, no negative side effects. As a matter of fact, the only negative side effects from this virus come when you're very old, when everything in your body is kind of falling apart. And um, we, of course, are not giving you those negative side effects. We're using, we're taking out its ability to replicate and we are using the, it as a gene therapy deliver, delivery method to deliver um, healthy, uh, safe genes. Right, interesting. Okay, so can we kind of look at the, the future um, so you're using, I mean, it was interesting, especially when you spoke about uh, what you're doing with Rutgers, like this seems to be like trying to address all of the hallmarks of aging in kind of in one go, which kind of is very interesting. So can you talk a little bit about where you see that going and, and what kind of timelines would you be? Well, we have our, our first two drug candidates. And so as soon as the paper comes out, we will start to uh, look for funding for the work that takes those two drugs to preclinical uh, status and to IND for human use. Um, in the meantime, we will start to parallel studies in our multi-gene deliveries that we've already are designing and, and, and applying for uh, provisionals. And those will start to take us towards the multi-gene uh, delivery uh, for uh, human homeostasis. The timeline, I really don't like to get into timelines. <laughs> Um, it should have been yesterday, as far as I'm concerned, uh, for uh, 41 million people uh, in the last 12 months, they're dead. It's way too, too slow for them. Uh, in the next year, it'll be another 41 million, and that number is actually climbing with the aging population. So um, I imagine for many people, it doesn't matter what I say, as long as it's more than five years off, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll move as quickly as we possibly can. Um, the reason that we support uh, companies that do offshore medicine is because other, there are people who can't wait. And um, that is a quite unfortunate uh, situation, but it's actually a reality. Um, so, you know, if we have a drug candidate today and we get it through preclinical in the next two years, uh, the way the system works today, you will not see it for the next until the next 15 years are up and only if you have a specific condition. So we need to fix a uh, system to help more people. Uh, we need to keep the safety and efficacy protocols of the US FDA, but we need to get people advanced access. And I believe that President Biden addressed that uh, somewhat in his State of the Union address where he uh, responded by saying that we needed a DARPA version 
of healthcare, and um, and that's what it needs to be. And we really hope that our company will be part of developing that. Right. Interesting. So you know, you've heard of the concept of a longevity escape velocity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so obviously, when the when, if the, the the system from Rutgers works, then that would be achieved, right? But you could achieve that kind of before that, right? Yeah, we. we I think that you know, so, and in some ways, so uh, we just had the. Um, one of the longest uh, genetic um, extensions of mice uh, in one of our studies, one of the arms of our studies. And um, if that uh, actually uh, uh, applies to humans, uh, then we could already be extending life so that people could live longer to see the next stages of technology, which means our multiple gene therapy deliveries. And so it's really a mandate uh, to move this technology forward. Um, Again, it's a very long road uh, to regulations. And so hopefully um, the government will eventually work with companies like ours in order to create an expedited use for what I call uh, best choice medicine. Right. It, it is because there's, I mean, there's so much happening in this space. It, uh, it's just, it's difficult to keep up with. Um, and it, it, in some ways it moves so quickly, in some ways it moves slowly. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it was 2014, we started something called the Longevity Reporter. And it was uh, a Facebook outlet to look at anything new in aging. And um it was almost impossible uh, to put together a newsletter. I mean, we just, all we were looking for was four pieces on aging and uh, we would have to put uh, articles about just about everything else because there was not any good information. And now there's so much good information. uh, If you want to go to, you know, like your Google and tell it to pull uh, notifications from aging, aging research, gene therapy, it's daily things are pumping through. Now, some have more loose associations, some have more strong associations, but there's nary a paper that you will read uh, that talks about Parkinson's or stroke or anything else that doesn't now talk about the aging cell, things like mitochondrial dysfunction, telomere attrition is all over the place. I mean, it's just really starting to prolifically roll into into essentially aging research. Institutes are opening up their own aging uh, research centers. I mean, this is a fantastic uh, time to be part of this technology. We've gotten, uh, we have a kit, they're advanced groups in high school. Um, They're uh, highly gifted uh, teenagers. Um, They want to work for us. Um, They want to do internships. We've got people from colleges uh, reaching out, the biggest colleges in the world that want to work on this now. This is fantastic. I am so happy. And I would tell everyone um, who's interested in uh, biological fields to and bio, uh, biomedicine to go into this area. It's just, it's so fascinating. And what we'll be able to do in the future will be mind boggling uh, compared to the little strides that we're just trying to do today. Yes. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.